Hello friends, so today in this video, we're going to discuss a problem from lead code, problem name array nesting. So I will first tell you the problem statement, it's tell, like it's tell that you are given an integer array nums, where this nums array is actually a permutation of different numbers from ranging from 0 to n minus 1. So there are n positions, so from 0 to n minus 1, there are numbers which are permutation from like 0 to n minus 1. Okay. Now, what you actually have to do here is, you have to find out the longest cycle in this. What 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 I mean by cycle is, let's assume that you choose any index. Okay, so uh, let's assume that you choose, uh, as you can see in the example, this this exact index which is the zeroth index. Okay, so you start from the zeroth index, and then you go to the fifth index, which is the number at this point. So you go to the fifth index, which is six. Now you go to the sixth index, which is two. Okay, now you go to the twoth index, which is this zero. And you again go to zero index, which is five. So as you can see, it is forming like a loop. So you start from the zero index, then you go to the fifth, then sixth, then so fifth, sixth, and then go to the second, and then again to the zero index. So you have to find out, as you can see, this is a cycle or loop of size four. So I have to return out four. So you have to find out what is the maximum length cycle in this problem. Now, what you can easily understand from two three examples which are given to you that the cycle are isolated from each other what i mean by this is let's assume that i have an array and it has different numbers okay i do not write down the numbers but i just tell you that this that maybe this is a cycle so i go from this index to this index then this index then this index and then again to the this index back so as you can see now it cannot happen that for this number i can again go to this index why because see from this number, I can go to this index. So if this is like this twoth index, it should be two because from this index, I should go to two, but this cannot happen that this I, from this also, I can go to two because then it cannot be a permutation. Permutation are unique numbers. So it means that this path is not valid. I cannot go to the same loop again. So it can happen that from this point, these two numbers are taken. I can go to this point that this point and then back to this point. This can be two loops. So as you can see, what I can easily do in this problem is maintain a visited vector, which means that whatever numbers I have already visited, because if that number is some sort, some part of a loop, what I mean by this is, let's assume I start from this and I go in this manner and I completed one loop. If I come to this point again, while iterating, like while iterating from left to right, I'm going from left to right and checking for every starting point. So I haven't taken out a loop from this point. So I will go and find out a loop from this point and it ended at this point. So it is fine. Now I take starting from point at this, go from this to this and then come back to this point again. So it is forming another loop. Now I come to this point. So as you can see, this is a part of a loop which I've already traveled because I've traveled this point. So I do not have to do it again because if I do it again, I will, I will get the same loop again. So I don't want to do that. So it means that I can keep a visited vector whatever numbers I've already seen so that I cannot do it again because it is already a part of a, a loop which I've already seen. So it means that I only have to travel over every number only once because I'm only touching it once while finding out a particular loop. And when I find out a loop, I actually store that what is the longest loop length and that's the answer. I hope you get the point so I can show you the code part now. So uh, because I want to store whatever points are actually visited so I can make a global visited vector because the length is 10 to the 5 so just make it 10 to the 5 plus like 10 to the 5 plus 5 okay or 10 to the 5 plus 6 anything greater than 10 to the 5 and this is the maximum length I can get this is the uh, nested array function the starter function the length because I have to iterate from left to right so I iterate over from left to right for every starting point as you can see and I only do my OK function or this iteration function only when I find out that the particular ith element is not visited. If it is not visited, I will call this OK function over the starting point, which is i. And what is the total length I have seen till now, which is like zero. And I have to also send the array uh, because I have to check that what is the next point to jump on and next point to jump on. Okay. And in the end, we just return on maximum. How this OK function is calling is if this loop is completed i have to first always write on the base condition in recursive function so the base condition is i have encountered the same number again so it means that i have this is a starting point which is not visited so i will go from this to this this to this this to this when will this recursive function stop this recursive function will stop when i come to the same point again 
which is already visited. So I have already visited out because I start from this point. So at this point it should break. So it will break when I hit a block which is already visited. So as you can see, if I have already visited out, the visited of that point is equal to one. Then I have completed my total journey. So my total length of this journey is stored in total. So I will maximize my total maximum global maximum with this total value and return out of this recursive function. Else, if I haven't come to a point or a block which I have already seen, which means that this is a new block. So I will first mark it out one that okay I have seen this block now. So now from this block I have seen this. I will call this recursive function again to the new jumping position. The new jumping position will be the current index I am on. Find out the value of that. So if I am on the fifth index, okay from fifth index, what is the number at the fifth index? It is telling you three. So go to the third index now. So my new jumping position will be nums of i. Okay, and you will just tell the nums again. And because I have taken one more number, so my total will increment because now my chain has incremented by one position because I have taken the particular number and go to the next question. And just that's the recursive function. I hope you understand the logic and the code part for this problem. If you have any doubts, you can mention down. I will see you in the next one. Till then, keep coding and bye.